question number five, we have the same flywheel with a smaller hub rolling down without slipping, so we have frictional force here, rolling down this incline. The force of gravity parallel pulls this down at mg sine theta, sine of 30 is one half. This is not frictionless. This does not slide down with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. We need to recognize that the frictional force is pulling it upwards. And it's a difference of gravity parallel and the frictional force that provides your acceleration. So the way to solve this with dynamics is to take the sum of the torques is equal to I times alpha. And there's only one torque acting about the center of mass, and that's the force of friction times this small radius. And then use your sum of your forces. And now you've got three unknowns. Acceleration, alpha, and the force of friction. But you have a third equation. You can substitute this into here, solve for the force of friction, and put it in here, and then you've got one equation. If instead of looking at it as the torques about the center of mass, we say, let's let this be the rotation point, and look at the whole system rotating about this point. Now, why this is nice is it allows your torque, rather than to be a force you don't know times the radius, it's a force that you do know, the parallel component of gravity, times the perpendicular radius, or just r. So we can calculate this torque very easily and set it equal to i times alpha. The only difference is now the moment of inertia, because we're rotating about this point and not this one. The moment of inertia is one half mr squared, because this is rotating, and then this whole system rotating at this distance radius. So we have to add that term to the moment of inertia. So we can put these numbers in and see that adding this extra component from the parallel axis theorem only increases the moment of inertia slightly from 0.135 to 0.165. The torque we can get very easily. It's a force of gravity times the sine of theta, which is one half now, times the radius. And we divide that out and we see we get an alpha we get an angular acceleration of about 9 per second squared, and we can find the linear acceleration by multiplying by the radius, and we get 0.9 meters per second squared accelerating downward, about 1 meter per second squared, and it's worth noting that's much less than the gravity divided by 2, 5 meters per second squared we'd get if this were sliding frictionlessly down the plane. So that frictional force is significant because a lot of your potential energy is being turned into rotation rather than just linear velocity.